Hey people, welcome to The Run Testers. And in this video brought to you in partnership with Precision Fuel and Hydration, we are talking about the best running belts. Now we've become big fans of max storage shorts that come with built-in belts. And there's a video on the channel where you can find out our top picks, top recommendations for that kind of shorts. But we also consider a good running belt as an essential piece of running kit. It gives you a place to stash your everyday run essentials with everything from keys, phone, travel cards, a bit of cash if you take cash nowadays, as well as carrying things like gels, fuel, hydration, even water bottles on those longer runs and races. Now we've tested dozens of the latest and best belts for comfort, for durability, and for capacity, and we're about to reveal our top picks in this video. But before we get into the belts, the team at Precision Fuel and Hydration have helped us put together a quick handy guide to how much fuel you need to stuff into your belt to cover off your different runs. So how much fuel should you carry for each different run? Well, for a 10 kilometer run, if your 10K will take you less than an hour and you're well fueled and hydrated at the start, there's no need to top up your carbs on the run, though you might want to take a little bit of water with you. But once you're into runs that go longer than 90 minutes, let's say two to three hours and beyond, so that's half marathons for some of us, and that'll be full marathons for all of us, then you're going to need to aim to hit 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour extra to keep your energy levels up so you can hit your race goals. Now, if you want to get really personal with a race fueling plan, you can head over to Precision Fuel and Hydration website where there's some brilliant simple tools to help. Their free fuel and hydration planner will give you a detailed and tailored fueling and hydration plan based on the event or the run you're planning to take on. Tap in all your details there and you can make sure that you're gonna be taking on enough energy and water and electrolytes to keep you going to hit those goals. Now we've dropped a link to the planner into the caption below. It takes just a couple of minutes to complete and it's an excellent starting point for developing your fueling and hydration plan for any run. And while you're over there, check out Precision's excellent range of gels, chews, hydration products that make it super easy to hit those numbers and provide an extra kick in the pants right when you need it most. You can also use the code RUNTESTERS at checkout or hit the link to get a 15% discount of anything you buy. I'd recommend these 90 gram carb pouches. They're ace if you only want to stick one thing in a running belt on those long Sunday runs. I also love the compact chews for a change of texture on longer, slower plods to mix it up a bit. So yeah, go and check those out. And to find out how to carry them and where to stash them, let's get into our RUNTESTERS top picks of the best running belts for every run. So my first pick for belts is the Evadict Trail Running Hydration Belt from Decathlon. It costs £25 in the UK. It doesn't seem to be available on the US Decathlon website at the moment, but maybe that will change in the future. Uh, a big fan of this belt. I now prefer it to the Decathlon belt I used to use, which was the Hydration Flask Carrying Belt, which I did find was really good, but not quite as durable as this one, which seems to be made of slightly sterner stuff. So as you design for trail runs, it's got loops on the back for poles you can use during ultras and also little toggles on the front you can use for your race numbers. It's a very high capacity belt. There's big pockets on the front and back. The back one in particular can take a 500 milliliter soft flask, no problems. And it's even got little pockets within that pocket to put essentials you don't need easy access to, like maybe a key or something like that. And the front, you've got another big pocket with a waterproof zip pocket behind it for your phone. Always very important to me on the long runs is to keep the phone away from like sticky gel, sweat, rain, anything like that. I think that's really useful. And there's some side pockets as well, just for little drop-in pouches for more gels, that kind of thing. Reflective details all over it, but what I really like about it is the very fast toggles you can use on the side to really tighten the belt against you so you're not getting a bouncing, annoying fit on the run. The belt itself comes in two sizes, but they're quite a wide range, so it's quite easy to find the one that fits you because you can then cinch it tight with the toggles and then really no matter how much you stuffed in it, it won't bounce around. And obviously as you drink your water uh, from the soft flask and it gets smaller, you can then continue to tighten the belt so it remains nice and snug against you throughout the whole run. So yeah, that's a really good belt, I think, for marathon training or for long runs on the trails when you don't really want to carry a rucksack if you can possibly avoid it because uh, you can carry a lot of fluid in here and enough for kind of two hour, three hour runs even on the trails without any concerns. And obviously it's a really good price as always from Decathlon. So my second pick is the Camelback Ultra Belt. Uh, this is 50 pounds in the UK, $60 in the US. This is another belt I've had for a long time. Uh, I think actually since I had the one that I've been testing, they've now updated all the colors. There is a nice new range of colors available. I don't have my belt anymore because I lent it to someone because I was very strongly recommending it for their marathon training and uh, they've got it for the moment. Uh, it's a really useful belt for that. It's another very high capacity belt that has a lot of separated pockets so you can divide up different bits. You can easily carry 
carry a 500 milliliter soft flask in the back pocket or smaller soft flasks dotted around the belt and then have a separate pocket for your phone, a pocket for other gels, all that kind of thing, which makes it very easy to go on long runs, know where everything is. You can put rubbish in one pocket and keep you know, little bits of gel from seeping onto other parts of your kit. And it's a really comfortable belt as well. The mesh that on the inside of the belt sits really nicely against the skin for long periods of time. It can absorb a lot of sweat, I found. You can tighten the back pocket to hold the uh, larger soft flask in place and just in general keep the belt from bouncing. I find it sits quite nicely on the hips. You can wear it even a little bit higher. And it's just a really solid all-round belt, again, for carrying a lot of stuff for either longer runs where you don't want to carry a backpack but still want to have quite a lot of liquid with you or for marathon training or marathon racing even just because you can carry all your gels very easily with you plus a phone if you want to keep that with you at all times as well so yeah that's the camelback ultra belt another high capacity belt i'm a big fan of my first pick is the Thetletic bolt double running pouch belt so this is the don of my running belts i've been using this for about three years now it's still my favorite i use it for pretty much every single run that i go on it is pretty simple it has one really large pocket and then a smaller pocket at the side. The reason that I like this belt so much is that the large pocket holds my fairly beefy Pixel 7 Pro um, and the small pocket holds quite a lot really. It holds cards, um, keys, anything else you sort of want to add in there. It, that pocket alone, with if you didn't weren't carrying a phone, would be able to carry quite a lot of stuff. Normally, I use this on a, on a daily basis. I use it for uh, all of my runs because I take with me my phone, loads of other bits and pieces as well. Uh, and um, wh I also use it for racing as well because you can also fit quite a few gels in it as well. Um, so if I'm doing a marathon uh, I, and I don't tend to take my phone with me on marathons, it just becomes a really good gel pouch. So I'll probably take five gels on a marathon with me, uh, maybe six if, I'm, if I want to take one to the start and have one before. Um, I tend to put a couple of them in the back of my shorts uh, so I know which type of gel is in there because sometimes I mix the gels that I've got. Um, but this can probably hold like seven or eight gels in the, in the main pocket and then like another three in that uh, smaller pocket. It's just loads of space in it. It's a really good uh, versatile belt that just does a load of stuff. Um, it's also made from this really uh, tough material. I'm not sure what the material is, but it's sort of stretchy. Um, and it, I've been using this every, pretty much every day for about three years and it's still really good. It's a little bit of wear on the back, but it's, I've had no issues with it at all. It's really, really good. Uh, I've got a 30 inch waist um, and the smallest setting on this fits me really well. So I have to pull it all the way, um, but it, it fits me perfectly. I never have hardly any bouncing on it or anything like that. It's just a fantastic daily um, running belt that ticks a lot of boxes and I think if anybody was looking for a running belt um, and you weren't going for like ultra marathons or things like that this is the best to go for for me it just does everything I want it to do and the zips work really well it's just just fantastic my second belt is also fitletic I'm a bit of a fan of fitletic running belts um, and this is one that I used for a long time um, before I got the fitletic bolt uh, now this is the ultimate two running belt this is a little bit more serious than the bolt uh, it has this main section here for holding your phone or gels or anything like that um, it's not as big as the bolt so i do find that i struggle a bit to get my pro um, uh, google pixel pro in there uh, but it also has this secondary um, uh, velcro pocket at the end as well which you can use for smaller things it doesn't really hold that much you can probably hold a couple of keys in it you can probably stick um, i don't know smaller items that you might be carrying around with you i have used it in the past for like hydration tablets and things like that um, because it means that you can get to them quite quickly so if i'm doing a marathon and i've got hydration tablets in there i can just zip it open and pull it out without having to stop and um, unzip anything which is a nice little feature it has a load of extra features on this which are really designed for trail runners ultra runners um so you've got your bib things here so you can put your bib uh, on with the little straps instead of using a safety pin um, on your chest i don't really use that i generally always use uh, safety pins uh, you've also got a lot of little um, elasticated loops here so they're for gels um, and you can sort of slip the gels in there and pull them out quickly again i don't tend to use those very much because i always find there's enough space in this to put gels into the zip container but um, you can do that if you want, if you want to carry loads of gels and you want them to be easily accessible. It also has this little uh, 
loop so you can put keys and things like that on it if you want to um, have them readily available and then slip them into the pocket. Um, but other than that, it is a really hard wearing solid belt. Um, I've had this one for a very long time as well and it still looks absolutely great. Uh, what I would say about this one is that it's quite chunky. So um, if you're running and it's quite hot, you will get a sweatier midriff wearing, wearing this because it's quite a thick layer. It's almost like a wetsuit material, um, which is not a problem at all if you're uh, in cooler areas. Um, but yeah, if you're in a hot area, you're going to notice that probably and start to sweat quite a bit on your back. My third pick is slightly different than the Fitletic belts that I picked. Um, it's one that's really designed for trails. It's designed for um, comfort and gels and things like that over longer distances. It's the North Face Summit Race Ready belt. Now this is a one piece. So the other ones that I've talked about have clips in them. So you open them up and you you, you clip them on. Uh, this is a one piece. So you sort of put it on like a belt that you'd have to step into and, and pull it up. But I do find it, it fits me very well. Um, the thing about this belt is that it is not as hard wearing as the um, Fitletics, but that makes it a lot lighter, a lot more breathable, very good for hotter conditions um, or people who don't want to carry a big chunky thing on their waist. Um, it's very much focused on those uh, longer trail runs where you want to carry gels and things like that, but you don't want lots of extra weight on you. Uh, so it can carry a phone. It does have a zip pocket you can put a phone in. It won't fit my um, Pixel Pro. Uh, it's far too big for this. So you might be all right with like an iPhone or something, one of the smaller iPhones, um, but I don't use it for, um, for my phone. What I tend to use this for is if I'm going out trail running, um, and I'm not taking my phone with me uh, and I just want to carry some gels um, and a few other things. It has a water bottle holder on it. Uh, I don't tend to use that either. I don't really carry a lot of water when I'm out on the run, um, but it is very light and very comfortable if you're only carrying gels on you. Uh, and I don't really notice this on my waist when I've got, when I've got gels in it. So it's a very uh, comfortable and breathable um, belt to wear. As well as that zip pocket, you've got, I think four different uh, stash pockets in here. So those are pockets that don't have a zip on them and they're designed to quickly put stuff in like gels and things like that. I wouldn't put uh, essentials in there like my keys and stuff because I like them to be in a zip pocket uh, but these are very good for gels um, and there's lots of options so you can have them in different areas and find which access point works best for you uh, gives you a bit of freedom to, to do that you've also got your uh, bib um, clips on there so you can wear a bib if you don't want to wear um, a safety pin um, bib on your uh, t-shirt also has the ability to hold poles as well I don't use poles. I'm, I'm, I am I'm I'm mainly use this for easier trail runs. I'm not going out on the mountains and using this quite a lot. But you can put your poles if they're the sort of poles that you can take apart. If you had a long pole, obviously you you wouldn't be able to stick it in this back thing. But uh, yeah, if you've got those um, special types of poles that uh, collapse, you can use that for, the, for those as well. Overall, uh, it's just a really nice lightweight belt. And I think I might look at using this one for Berlin Marathon when it comes up because I don't run marathons with a phone. I just want to carry gels. Um, and I think this, this might be a nice breathable option that um, will just do the job uh, and not cause me any issues when I'm out running. So first up, I've got the Naked Running Belt. Now the Naked Running Belt is my go-to option for adding simple storage on runs. Now I know some people hate having the word naked emblazoned on the front here, but mine's always covered by a tee or a jacket. And so that branding doesn't bother me. I know it does some of you out there, you've told us in the comments. Anyway, beyond that, this is wide, it's soft, it's lightweight, but it's got four accommodating stretch mesh pockets that holster a surprising amount of stuff, crucially without bouncing around. It sits nice and close to the body. The thin fabric, this kind of mesh is fast drying. It doesn't hold too much moisture and it's thin and light and surprisingly durable too. I've been using this belt for a number of years, including my 1,830 mile, 67 day run along the Danube. There's some wear and tear, but this is still going strong. Now the capacity of this is excellent. It will take everything you need really for a marathon. You can squeeze small shell jackets in the back. There's even enough room for a 500 mil soft flask. So to be honest, that's not entirely bounce free if you put that in there. There are also tabs for attaching race numbers and this thing will survive hundreds and hundreds of washes. Second up, I've got the flip belt zipper. This is a long time favorite running belt of mine. The soft but quite thick fabric comes in a single fixed size loop. So it's not adjustable, but it's really comfortable. This fabric's a little softer against the skin. It offers excellent flexible storage with one zippered front pocket and then a larger single back pocket with entry points. There's enough stash space here to pack all your run essentials. It will swallow larger phones, a marathon's worth of gels, and even a lightweight rain shell at a push. 
You've got access at different points as well, which makes it easy. There are cheaper non-zippered versions, but I prefer the belt with a single secure zippered pocket, which is great for holding a phone and knowing that you've got your crucial kit, like a head torch or whatever, stashed safely. There's also a key loop two here for securing keys and headphone cases, which I also really love. Mine is still going strong after years and years of use in all kinds of conditions and hundreds of washes, though the zipper has given up the ghost a bit. I might get that replaced, but the belt, the, but the belt is still functional and still good. Oh, there are also reflective options too if you want to get that for a little bit of added night safety. That is the flip belt zipper. Now my final pick is the Innovate race belt. It's got a smaller overall capacity, but if you're looking for a simple but versatile adjustable belt option that's good for daily runs and adding accessible storage on ultras and longer trail runs, this is worth a look. It's very lightweight. It comes in one size, but that adjustable belt lets you kind of scale up and down the fit. It's particularly good if you've maybe need a little bit more room. Storage wise, there's a main zippered pocket that'll hold a larger smartphone and then a large drop-in pouch that sits in front of that. That's open so you can keep other stuff away from your phone screen but drop in more stuff. Beyond that, there's one side mesh pocket that's still pretty small. You can take a headphones case or maybe a head torch or a buff or a pair of gloves. On the other side, you've got one hooded pocket that comes with a handy built-in whistle, an obligatory piece of kit, and a loop here where you can attach your keys. But perhaps the most useful trail ultra trick here is that you've got these two loops on the front there that let you carry poles for easy access. They will sit fairly securely, but as you can see, it's quite a wide loop, so you're probably gonna to want to have sort of slightly bigger poles. They hold firmer. And when I'm running with that, if I've got the poles in there, I like to have my poles on the back rather than on the front. So what I'll do is I'll spin it round and sit the pouch at the back, but that's pretty easy to do if you want to. So that is the Innovate race belt. So there you have it, that's our pick of the best running belts you can buy right now. Let us know if we've missed anything. Questions and comments down below. Don't forget to head over to Precision Fuel and Hydration, links in the caption below this video to check out their range of fueling, hydration and essentials and use those tools to get your own personalized fueling guidelines to help your miles run smoother. As ever, it's been a real pleasure talking to you about running belts and we will hope to see you again soon on the run testers. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy running out there.